All right, guys, it is my day off, but welcome into Steelers Talk. I'm your host, Jack Sperry. Um, but today we got some pretty big injury updates in preparation for the Steelers Week 3 game against the Los Angeles Chargers. So I wanted to hop on here real quick and discuss uh, what the ramifications are for all the latest news updates that we have gotten. And a little bit of a surprise today, Troy Fautano was added to the injury report today, uh, was taken out of practice because his knee flared up. Of course, that knee that was bothering him in training camp. Uh, so he left, he got an MRI, and now he's listed as questionable. Broderick Jones got all of the first team reps um, with the offense today in practice. So it's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out. Guys, before we really dive into all the injury updates today, I've got a lot to talk about. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you haven't already. We just passed 60,000 subscribers here on Steelers Talk. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't describe how... Um, thankful and grateful I am for all the support that you give to me, to Coop, to all of our team here at Steelers Talk by Chat Sports. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button because even if it's my day off like it is today, if I'm on vacation, doesn't matter. If there's a breaking news story, we got to talk about it. We're going to get a video out to you guys as soon as I can possibly get it to you. Okay, so let's talk first about Troy Fautano, the first round rookie offensive tackle out of Washington who had his NFL debut last week against the Denver Broncos. Didn't allow a single pressure was really looking forward to his um, matchup this week against Joey Bosa of the Los Angeles Chargers that was going to be really a marquee matchup but today he left practice after he tweaked his his knee uh, of course he missed a good portion of training camp in the preseason and and uh and, you know, he didn't start the season as the starter at right tackle because of that knee injury. Um, so this is definitely a concern, uh, especially, you know, heading into just, just hours away from week three here against the Chargers. So um, he did get an MRI on it. Uh, we don't know necessarily specifics on just how bad it is, how many weeks he's going to miss, if he's going to miss time. He is listed as questionable right now, so it does seem like there is at least a chance that he plays on Sunday. But I definitely say at this point, um, you know, it's his status for Sunday is definitely in jeopardy, which means that Broderick Jones could be in line to start this week against Joey Bosa, who is a legitimate number one edge rusher. He can wreck a Sunday for an NFL offense if you don't have somebody to block him adequately. We all remember uh, in the preseason, the last time Broderick Jones went up against a true number one edge rusher in Greg Rousseau, and he gave up, what, I think two or three sacks in that football game. So I'm definitely worried if Broderick Jones is the starting right tackle um, you know obviously this offensive line played pretty okay in week one versus the Atlanta Falcons when he uh, played the entire football game as the starting right tackle so hopefully he can play more like in week one than what we saw from him in the preseason and of course last week when he played one drive and had three penalties um, hopefully we don't see him get penalized hopefully we don't see this offensive line unit as a whole get penalized. Um, so I do think that this is going to be a matchup to be watching out for. This is going to be a new story to be watching out for here when it comes to Fautano, whether he's going to play. If he's not, can Broderick Jones hold up against Joey Bosa? And honestly, I think the answer is, generally speaking, no. I think Joey Bosa is a much better player than Broderick Jones is at this point. Uh, and I think it's definitely going to limit the Steelers' offense and what they can do if Broderick Jones has to start instead of Troy Fautano. Um, the second big story... Uh, to cover today. Justin Herbert spoke to the media today. He has not practiced all week with a high ankle sprain and he is listed as questionable for Sunday. Now head coach for the Chargers Jim Harbaugh said earlier in the week that he expects Justin to play so I do think he'll be out there on Sunday but the fact that he's still dealing with some pain, the fact that he hasn't practiced all week tells me not only he might not be fully prepared to play this game against arguably the best defense in football in the Pittsburgh Steelers but his mobility is going to be significantly hindered and he doesn't have the best pocket presence to begin with. So, so I think that TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, Nick Herbig, Cam Hayward, Keanu Benton, this pass rush is going to have a field day, especially if they can get early pressure on Justin. I just don't know if he's going to be able to get the ball out because this pass rush has just been so freaking good to start this 2024 campaign. Um, like I said, he is listed as questionable. If he doesn't play, um, I do think that, you know, Easton Stick or whoever they threw out, whoever else they throw out there is not going to be able to have success against the Steelers' pass rush. I do think Herbert gives them the best possible chance to win, even with that high ankle sprain. Um, but I do think at this point, 
Whether Justin plays or not, the Pittsburgh Steelers' focus needs to be on containing the run game. And if they can do that, I don't think the quarterback's going to be able to do much. Um, and if you're really doing a good job containing J.K. Dobbins and what has been a very successful Chargers offensive line to this point, um, I do think that the Steelers are going to be able to keep the Chargers to under 10 points. And that definitely uh, gives Justin Fields and the Steelers offense a very low bar to clear in the home opener here to get to 3-0 and on the season. So definitely expect a high um, or, or a big time effort from the Steelers defense this week. And honestly, if Herbert isn't healthy, I'd be surprised if this team gets more than 10 points in the Los Angeles Chargers on Sunday. Now before we get into Roman Wilson's latest update, and then we got an update on Isaac Sayamalo as well. Before we get into those, let's have a word from our sponsor here at Game Time, which is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for the sports, music, comedy, and theater in your area. And folks, we all know that experiencing a sporting event, especially live uh, and in person, is so much better than and, and just completely different from watching the game on your couch. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks right now, where any event you want to go to, you just select the Game Time Picks button, and it automatically does all the research for you to find the best tickets at the best price for that event event on their platform. They also have the lowest price guarantee on any ticket to any event, all in pricing so you don't get slapped with crazy fees at checkout. And then if you're someone like me, like to procrastinate and get your tickets kind of late right before the event, um, they actually have flash deals. So they're already guaranteed low prices drive down even further the longer you wait to the start of the event. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time today. Download the Game Time app, um, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS. That's one word, all caps, CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase terms do apply just for that first purchase again that's creating an account with game time uh, and redeem code chat sports one word all caps chat sports for twenty dollars off download game time today what time is it it's game time okay so let's talk about roman wilson who fully practiced today on friday uh, he's been a full participant in practice these last two days and he is on track to make his nfl debut this week versus the chargers against his former head coach of course he is a former michigan wolverine um, you know, and he won a national championship with Jim Harbaugh just last year. So the fact that he's going to be playing his first NFL game against his former college coach is definitely a really, really cool storyline for Roman. But outside of just the cool storyline, I can't wait to see this guy play, okay? Because we've seen what Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin III have done in the first two weeks. It hasn't been much. It's been George Pickens mostly, and then, you know, Pat Firemuth sprinkled in here and there. Darnell Washington has caught the only touchdown pass, but he's been pretty quiet as well in general. Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin III aren't really good options for Justin Fields at this point. Um, so I'm, I'm very intrigued to see if Roman Wilson, who has had a very limited time in practice with Justin, with Russ, with pretty much the entire offense to this point, how he looks in his first NFL action. I will say I'm going to lower the, t the expectations just a little bit for Roman, uh, especially out of the gate because he is so new, because he has missed so much time in practice. Uh, since he had that ankle injury in the first pad practice there in Latrobe in training camp this year. Um, so I do think it might take him a little bit of time to ramp up, but I am really hoping that by the trade deadline, he has really solidified himself as the number two receiving option. And maybe this Steelers team doesn't even feel the need to trade for another receiver at the deadline. Maybe that's the case. So that's what is probably the best case scenario. Roman Wilson is an immediate success, and I'm very excited to see what he's going to look like here in this first um, action as a Pittsburgh Steeler. Okay, now let's talk about Isaac Sayamalo. Um, the guard that has missed the first two games of the season. He's listed as out for this week three matchup as well. Of course, he's getting back from that pec strain that he uh, suffered before week one. And uh, with the report that we got today was that he is uh, looking like he could play next week versus the Colts. Um, now, he's probably going to be more of a question mark heading into next week, but at least it's a possibility that he could be on the field for week four. And I do think if he misses next week against the Colts, you can definitely expect him back in week five when we play the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday night football. Okay, so Samalo is getting back. Spencer Anderson has been kind of unremarkable, but he's been good enough. Okay, he hasn't been a disaster at left guard, and that's what you want out of your depth pieces on this offensive line. If somebody goes down, you want somebody to go in there and not be a disaster. Uh, kudos to Spencer Anderson for not being a disaster uh, to this point in the season. Hopefully he has another decent game against the Los Angeles Chargers tomorrow, or on Sunday, I should say, and 
once Samalo gets back, I think that this offensive line takes another step forward. I think that they've done a pretty darn good job to this point. They're they're having general success in the run game right now. Um, you know, obviously they're protecting Justin Fields quite a bit, which is good because Justin likes to hold on to the football. And once you get Samalo back, who's one of the best guards in football, in my opinion, I think that this offensive line takes another step forward. And then when you get Fautano back fully healthy and you have this entire offensive line um, figured out here where you got Dan Moore Jr. at left tackle, Sayamalo at left guard, Frazier at center, Daniels at right guard, and Fautano at right tackle. Honestly, I think that's a very solid offensive line unit for the Pittsburgh Steelers for the rest of the season. Hopefully these guys can stay healthy uh, for throughout the entirety of the 2024 campaign. And if they do, I do think this unit's going to be one of the probably the top 10 units in the National Football League this year. Frazier and Fautano look like the real deal for sure, man. Okay, so before we go to Today. I do want to get my updated score prediction given these um, injury updates. Now, I've already given two uh, sc score updates throughout the week on my preview, and then I actually have one going out tomorrow as well with the, with the How to Destroy the Chargers video. But I'm going to get my updated one here. and This is probably the, my final score prediction, given what we know about who's going to play, who's not going to play. We'll see what happens and if Fowltown was going to play. But right now, I don't think Troy is going to be out there. I do think it's going to be Broderick Jones at right tackle for the Steelers. Um, and because of that, I do think the Steelers score less points. But also, given what we know about Justin Herbert, and you know, I think that the Steelers' front seven is going to do a good job containing the run, I don't think the Chargers are going to score much points at all. It's going to be a slugfest. It's going to be physical. It's going to come down to which team makes the most mistakes. I think the Steelers make let fewer mistakes in this football game. I'm going to give the Pittsburgh Steelers the win in this one by a final score of 13 to 6. All right, so super, super low scoring is what I'm expecting here. I do think Broderick Jones is going to get his ass handed to him against Joey Bosa. I do think the Steelers will make enough plays to get one touchdown, but then probably two other field goals. And then I think the Steelers defense dominates yet again, and they only give up six points in this football game, whether whether it's Justin Fields, or whether it's Justin Herbert, I should say, or Easton Stick, I don't think either quarterback is going to be effective against this Steelers defense, which has just been absolutely unbelievable to start this season. So I'll go 13-6, to and if that's the case, I'd probably expect Russell Wilson to be the starting quarterback uh, moving forward. You know, if you have, if you're Justin Fields and you've had your three-game stretch of, what, 18 points, um, you know, and then two 13-point performances, that's just not going to probably be enough to hold off Russell Wilson from taking over in week four if he is fully healthy that is um, so that's kind of the last injury report here of the week I appreciate every every single one of you guys for uh, sticking around here make sure you click that subscribe button right now click that thumbs up icon support the channel um, we'll be back tomorrow I got two videos that I'm going to be pushing up tomorrow on college football Saturday we got uh, a Justin Fields spotlight video coming out tomorrow and then also a guide to destroy the Los Angeles Chargers so Two good videos coming out tomorrow. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button. And then, of course, on Sunday, Coop and I will be going live for our live watch party. Uh, week 3 versus the Chargers. That will start at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Full hour of pregame pre coverage, followed by live play-by-play, -play, and then extensive post-game coverage as well. So I appreciate your guys' support. I will see you guys then. And until next time, here we go, Steelers.